My name is Lauren Lau, and this is my adventure in Grand Colombia. I see a number of people that wonder how difficult it is to vote when you're not in the United States. So I put together something quick here to show you how simple it is. I want to point out, well, some of you might notice this, that, well, I, my official address is in New York. My driver's license and where I lived prior to coming overseas was North Carolina. And the last place I was registered to vote was in North Carolina. And that's all that's really necessary. Uh, so as I go through this, it's North Carolina. So you can pause this at any point and take a look at the web pages, the address. But right now we're going to play a little clip that they've got. Even though Americans live here, here, and, well, lots of places, we still have a say and a vote right here. Three million Americans living abroad can vote using FVAP.gov from wherever we are. Start on the FVAP.gov website to register to vote and request your absentee ballot be sent wherever you are. You register to vote absentee and request your ballot using one form, the Federal Postcard Application, or FPCA. On FVAP.gov, you can fill it out and get help along the way. You fill it out online, print it, and sign it. Then you send it to your election office. FVAP.gov explains how to do that for the state where you vote. You may be able to email, fax, or mail it back. Living outside the U.S., it may take some time to get your FPCA from here to here. It's a good idea to register and request your ballot as early as possible. Your ballot goes on a long journey before it gets to you. And that's why you should request your ballot by August 1st. When you receive your ballot, fill it out, sign it, and send it back to your election office as soon as possible. Your state may allow you to mail, email, or even fax your voted ballot back. FAP.gov provides all the state-specific instructions and contact information you'll need. Your election office receives your ballot for counting, and you're all set. If you don't receive your ballot in time to return it by your state's deadline, you can still vote. First, contact your election office to ask about the status of your ballot request and ask about next steps. If there's not enough time, use the federal write-in absentee ballot, or FWAB. Use your FWAB just like a regular ballot. Whether you use the official ballot or the FWAB, you can find out how to check your status at, you guessed it, fvap.gov. And that's it. That's how you can be here, here, and anywhere, but still vote and still have a voice here. Get started at fvap.gov. That's fvap.gov. It's important to realize that many states have different rules, and so they're not all going to be exactly the same. And the majority of the states will allow you to do everything by email. Now, this is an absentee ballot, which means you had to prove your identity. And when I fill this out, I have to prove my identity. Also, they allow me to email, and I don't have a printer, so what do I do if I, I, you know, I can't print it out? Well, I could take a copy to a local store and have them print it, and then I could sign it and take a picture like they're showing. But in truth, many states will allow you to do a digital signature, which won't necessarily look like your signature. And since my laptop is not functioning, which I could write on the screen, I'm using a, a system where I have to use a mouse and it's really unsteady. It's certainly problematic. But I used the mouse, steadied it best I could. This entire process, I sent it in, it was accepted. This entire process took me about 10 actual minutes. This was where they replied to my online request. 
They verified my ID and that I was a registered voter. And they sent this off, and you'll see up in the attachments where it says Lao and some other information, that's my actual ballot. And I'll show you that now. So there's nothing I really need to hide here. I put in the address of where I am living. These are all the instructions. It's for military or if you're living overseas, every category. Here you can see I can return it by fax or email. I'm not sure faxes exist anymore. But it tells you how to fill it out. You'll see here there's a couple signature lines, which I'll point out in a moment. And then we get to the actual ballot. A lot of this you can just ignore. So here's the actual ballot uh, for North Carolina, for Durham, North Carolina. And so you've got everybody that's on the ballot. It's got two pages worth. So I'm going to show you an example of how you can fill this out. It's a PDF, so at the top here you can see it's actually got some writing tools. Um, in my actual one, I chose uh, black, but you'll see here, and here I'm choosing both Republican and Democrat, um, but basically you would do that, and then it's just a little uh, humor that I marked off both, but you would go down through and you would um, make your selections that way. And then once you get that done, you fill out the uh, couple places that it needs for signature, and again, your state will be a little different. Now, try not to laugh too much at my signature here, but it was accepted. It wasn't actually in the general form, but again, they're really going by your proof of identity, which I had already done. So that's the privacy waiver, and now here's for the actual uh, certifying of the information. And that's it. So get out there and vote.